welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a follow-up to my Rustalin injections video. And um, I get a lot of emails and I've gotten a lot of questions on those videos. A lot of people are asking, um, is it something that I'll do again? Do I, do I still like the results? Um, is it still holding up, you know, four months later? And uh, so I'm gonna answer those questions and then I'm also going to turn off all of my lights because in the very first video that I made, um, like kind of my before and after, um, video, I turned off my lights because these lights are really forgiving and they really make somebody's complexion and skin look flawless. They don't allow for any shadows and stuff like that. But this is not what I look like in real life. I don't have these bright, you know, green eyes um, and I don't have this flawless complexion. And and so, so I'm going to turn off these lights because that's what I did in my first video because immediately you could see that the puffiness popped out whenever I just had overhead lighting on. And as you know, if you're 35 or above, overhead lighting can be our absolute worst enemy. Um, it's just very, very unforgiving and it just really, really accentuates flaws and stuff like that. This is probably the worst lighting in my house um, because I have one overhead lighting right there and then I've got a window right there. It is a different time of the day than it was when I shot my previous video, so I might look a little different, but for the most part, I think you're gonna get the um, the gist. But, um, okay, so let me go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the most um, common question that I get is, is it something that I would do again? Am I happy with the results? Absolutely, I will definitely be doing this again. Um, as far as the overall results, I'm very, very happy with the way that I look now as opposed to the way that I looked before having the injections. Now, there are a couple of trade-offs and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you those. I'm gonna pull you in really close and show you the things that I'm not really happy about. And I think, it, I don't know if it's um, an injector issue, like her technique or her skill or anything like that, or if it's just how everybody kind of responds. I just don't know, but there are a couple things that I'm, that I'm not crazy about. And so for that reason, I probably am gonna be going to somebody else next time. But um, overall, like I said, I'm very, very happy with the way that I look now as opposed to the way that I looked before. It's just, it before when I had the puffiness, it was just a really giant source of distress or I don't wanna say depression because that's a little bit too harsh. But it was, it, it was extremely disheartening to go to bed early, get a lot of sleep, only to wake up in the morning and look like you've stayed up all night. Um, it just stinks whenever you feel really good and you feel happy and you feel energetic and then you look in the mirror and the mirror's telling you something different, that, that you look tired or angry or even sad. Like sometimes I feel like my puffiness made me look sad. So of course nobody likes that and that's the reason why I got it done in the first place. Um, it has not budged at all. It's been four months now and I got my first injections and um, and then I had a follow-up about a month and a half later because I wanted to make sure all the swelling was gone down before I um, went and touched up the side that needed to be touched up because the last thing you want to do is chase a swell with a filler because a filler is going to be more permanent and swelling is going to go down. So you don't want to do that. So I just wanted to really make sure even though it was a month and a half and it felt like a forever, um, I just wanted to, to make sure. Now, um, something that I'm not very happy about is that I did bruise really, really bad on this side. If you saw my first video, then I showed you, you know, the following days and how badly I bruised. Now, to this day, I still have, let me see if you could see it. I still have this little scar right here from the injection site on this side. And I also have what looks like a line and it's just, it's just remnants or residual bruising. And I think it might be some sort of staining underneath. You know, uh, when I looked it up and I tried to find out if that was normal or something like that, they say that if you do bruise really bad, oftentimes you can have some staining that happens and it can be addressed with laser and stuff like that. But my body doesn't react like most people. Um, my body seems to work overboard to correct things. Um, I've had surgery on my stomach before. Um, my abdomen was pulling apart. I had surgery and I ended up keloiding. And that is, you know, my body being overly aggressive when it's trying to heal itself. One time I had laser to try to remove um, some spider veins on my leg and the laser scarred me for two years until my body just kind of absorbed it. So I knew that I, I might, it was, you know, it was a risk that I was willing to take because I was so unhappy 
with the puffiness, but I didn't want to have surgery, you know? So, um, so it was a risk that I was willing to take. So I kind of knew that I might bruise or may have some discoloration or I might be scarred. I don't, I just, you know, anyways. Um, but like I said, I will, I don't know because it's something that I've never done before. I don't know if it's a result of, um, the technique of the injector or if it's just how most people respond. Um, I know I got a lot of comments saying that other people didn't bruise at all. And then there were a few like me that just bruised really, really badly. I am hypothyroid and I also have a heart condition called right bundle branch block. So, and both of those um, kind of lend to easy bruising and long-term bruising or bruises that don't go away as, as quickly. So, um, so I kind of knew to expect some of those things. So anyways, in a, in a minute, I'm going to pull you in really close and I'm going to really point those things, the things out that I'm not crazy about because like I said, there are a few trade-offs to this. The overall, I'm extremely happy. I think I tell my husband two to three times a week how happy I am that I got this done. It's just one of the best decisions I've ever made as far as my appearance and stuff is concerned. It's really given me a lot more confidence and um, I just feel like it's before when I had the puffiness, the puffiness was a total mood changer for me and it could strip my confidence and it could ruin my day, you know? And so now I don't have to worry about that anymore, you know? It's just, it's really nice. So, um, so I'm going to pull you in close. I'm going to show you the things that I'm not crazy about just in case you get it done and you have these things happen too. Or if you, if you have gotten injections done and you don't have these things, I'd love to hear from you too, because then I'll know that it probably was an issue with the technique of, you know, the injector's technique. So anyways, let me go ahead and pull you in really close. Okay, I hope that I'm in focus right now. Um, I'm really, really close up. Please um, forgive me if I have any scaling or if my makeup application is terrible, if I have makeup flaking on my skin or something like that. Um, I just did a retin-A treatment, so I had to remove a lot of dead skin cells this morning, and I'm sure they come back right away. Um, okay, so let me tell you what it is that I'm not crazy about. Um, one of the things is this. Um, that's a scar, I think, from the injection site. And as you can see from that, there's like a line um, that's just residual bruising, you know, bruise staining or something like that. Not happy about that. Um, so that's one thing that, so that's one thing that I'm not happy about. Um, another thing is um, before, whenever I would smile really big and I had the puffiness, it's almost like the muscle would flatten out. Whenever I'd smile, the muscle would flatten out the puffiness. So I didn't look puffy at all whenever I would smile real big. Well, now I've got filler underneath where the puffiness was. So when I smile now, I feel like the filler kind of stands out a little bit. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, I think you can see, let me see, where's my mirror? Okay. I think you can see like right there, see how it kind of puffs out a little bit and there's like a divot right there. That bothers me. Now my husband thinks I'm crazy because he thinks unless somebody is like nose to nose with me, they would never ever pick up on that. You know, most people speak to each other at a reasonable distance. And so, um, you may or may not notice that I do. And in some, some lights, some certain lightings and stuff I do too. So, um, so that's it, you know, and I'm, I feel like I might be just a little bit overfilled right there because it doesn't really do it on this side. Or maybe she placed the filler deeper on this side and more close to the surface on this side. So I'm not happy about those two things. Um, like I said, overall, I'm more happy now than I was before, and those just happen to be kind of the trade-offs for me. So, um, so anyways, that's what I'm not happy about. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to turn off my lights so that you can see what I look like with just the overhead lighting, like I did in my first video. Okay, so here I am without my lighting. I'm sure I look a lot less glamorous. You know, I don't have the bright eyes and the flawless skin. Um, this is what I look like in real life. You know, I've got these beautiful crow's feet and everything. I'm sure I look a little bit more my age now, but I'm 43. So anyways, um, I've got my overhead lighting right there. and. In my first video, when I turned off all my lights, the puffiness just really, really jumped out right away. And as you can see, it's just not as pronounced as it was um, previously, before, you know, the Restylane injections. And, you know, I still have something going on there. It's not like it's flawless, um, but I was looking for improvement. I was not looking for perfection, and I feel like I really did get a lot of improvement. 
Um, so one thing that I am noticing in my viewfinder is that my bruise, you know, from, you know, that line left over from my bruise, that staining under the skin, you can really kind of see in this lighting a little bit better. Um, and so I'm not happy about that, but once again, that was just kind of a trade-off. Now in my other video, um, I tilted my head down because that's when things look really, really pronounced. Not that anybody ever walks around in the world with their head like that, but, um, but that's what I did. So I'm just trying to show you again so that you can see that it's not flawless, but it's definitely improvement, you know? Okay, so that's that. So I'm just going to turn my lights back on and say goodbye. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of this video. I hope I answered a lot of your questions. And um, if it's something that you're considering doing, um, I, I can say that if the results turn out good, it's definitely a life changer. And, um, and I really recommend you doing it. If this is a source of distress for you, you know, it's a wonderful alternative to um, surgery. And uh, that's why I decided to do it. And um, thank you for watching. And hope you guys have a great weekend.